So I'm back. Hopefully this is the same video. It's not, but we'll continue on anyway. Uh, continuing this derivation, uh, what we want to do is we actually want to solve this for di, so just really quickly. I promise only to do this once. Cross multiply, you get f do plus f di equals do di. We want to get the di's by itself, so f do equals subtract over here do di minus f di. Factor out the di. do minus f times di equals f do or di equals f do over do minus f. Whew, that's a mouthful. But this equation is more useful like now when we actually want to know what the distance of the image is, not the focal length. I promise to use this equation for the next cases instead of deriving it. When you put in the focal length, which was plus 3, times the distance to the object, which was 9, over the distance to the object, 9, minus the focal length, 3, that's going to give you 27 over 6, also known as a distance to the image that is 4.5. Notice that is a positive distance to the image because it's on the same side as the object. And looking at our drawing, I have to say I'm pretty proud of ourselves. Right here, 4.5, looks very good. To get the magnification, the magnification is going to be negative the distance of the image over the distance to the object, which is going to be negative. 4.5 over the object distance, which was 9, which is going to give us a magnification that's negative a half. So if you look here, this was 4 tall, and now this is showing us 2 tall, and it's inverted. So the negative sign on the magnification shows us that it's inverted, and the negative 1 half, the 1 half part tells us that it's going to be half the size. So that's the case for uh, an object that's really far away. Let's look at what happens if the object is somewhat closer. So less than the focal length, or more than the focal length away, but less than uh, the radius of curvature. So we're going to need us, we're going to need some axes. Okay, and let me just center this, make it a little. easier to see. So now what we need to do is we need to first of all pick a focal length. The focal length that we're going to use is going to be uh, four and a half. So if I put in the, again I don't really have to draw the lens, so let's put one, two, Three, one, two, three is twice the focal length of the radius of curvature. Three, one, two, three, it's gonna give you that. Uh, this is going to be a concave mirror. So something like that. Let's put in an object at a position that is 4.5 away. And uh, let's be bold. And this time, let's only make it two boxes tall, just so that I know it'll fit in. It just makes our life easier. The focal length is still plus three. The difference is now that the distance to the object is only four and a half. And we'll see what happens there. So the same rules are going to apply. I'm going to go in blue. We're going to take our parallel ray. It's going to come into the axis like that. When it comes in parallel, it's going to reflect back and go through a focal point like so. Another ray that you can draw would be one that goes through the focal point itself. So come through the focal point and when it hits the mirror it's going to reflect back in a direction that is parallel. And then the third one 
And this one people always find a little tougher to, to draw is it's got to go through the focal point. So it's not actually starting from there, but it's, it's actually going to be a little tough to draw. But it's going to have to go back through there. So what's going to happen is it's going to hit the mirror, it's going to reflect, and it's going to come back in exactly the same direction as it started because it's going along a radius of this circle. And when you hit the outside of a circle going along a radius, that's a 90 degree angle. It's going to reflect right back the way it came. No matter how you draw it, you're going to get an object that is going to be positioned over here. As you can see, it's going to be bigger. In fact, it looks like it's about twice the size. We'll verify that in a minute. And it's going to be upside down or inverted. And it's going to be real because it's on the same side as the object. So let's check these theoretically. Uh, we're going to use the short version of the equation here for the distance to the image. And the distance to the image is going to be the same as the focal length times the distance to the object over the distance to the object minus the focal length. So the focal length is still 3. Here the distance to the object is now only 4.5. So that's going to be 4.5 minus 3, which is going to give you 13.5 over uh, 1.5, which is going to give you a distance to the image that is uh, 9. So this is actually the kind of the exact opposite of the one we just did. You're going to get an image distance that's 9 when this is four and a half. So that's exactly twice as far away. Now this is positive, and the reason it's positive is because again, this image is on the same side as the object. If it was on the opposite side, it would be uh, a negative, and that would be a virtual image. But this is a real image. Another way to think about this is you could actually put some light source here, put another um, screen or something to project the light onto here, and you could actually collect it. It's going to actually focus the rays in our world, if you will. So that's going to be the distance to the image, very consistent with our drawing, one, two, three, that's exactly nine away. To get the magnification, it's just going to be, again, negative the distance to the image over the distance to the object, and that's going to give us uh, negative nine over the distance to the object is 4.5. That's going to give us a magnification that is negative Two. So the negative sign here shows us that the image should be inverted, and it is, it's upside down. And the two tells us that it should be twice as tall. When we look at our ray diagram, the original height was two, our final height was four, we're getting a magnification of minus two. So these two match up nicely. So you want to be able to draw a ray diagram, and you want to be able to calculate the image position and the magnification analytically using these two equations. So the last case that we need to look at with the concave lens is going to be what happens if we take this object and we move it closer, closer than the focal length. So we put some grid lines here. Uh, we're going to need some axes. Uh, <clears throat> this one's a little tougher to, to draw, uh, it's, but we can do it. I'm not going to draw the lens just because we're going to be drawing the object in so close, but I am going to label the radius of curvature and the focal length. So, if I get my pen back, one, two, three, that's the focal length, one, two, three more, that's the radius of curvature. I'm going to draw it on both sides. One, two, three. Uh, we're going to place our object in a position that is 1.5 uh, boxes away. And uh, I'm going to make it too tall again, like a bad joke I used in class. 2TWO, not TOO, that would be judgmental. So here's the object, and we need to draw the, some rays here. Uh, first ray we're going to draw is going to be the parallel ray. So from the top of the image to the mirror, 
By the way, let's remind everybody that this is going to be a plus three focal length because it is concave. And the object distance is going to be 1.5. So it's closer than the focal length. Well, what happens then? When this reflects, it's going to reflect through the focal point. So when you come in parallel, it's going to reflect through the focal point. What's well, interesting? Uh, what's going to happen if you try to draw it through the radius of curvature? Well, it's going to be a line that goes through this point and through this point. And then it's just going to reflect directly back. this and you can already start to see there's a little bit of a problem at least a, it seems like it's a problem in that normally what you're looking for is where these two rays converge on this side and if you look at this they're diverging so they're never actually going to uh, to cross the other uh, ray that you could draw would be uh, a ray that goes through the center axis it's going to reflect back at the same axis, but that's a, that's a little bit uh, tougher to, to draw. So what we actually have to do here is we have to trace these rays back. This is going to be a virtual image. So I'm going to go from here. It's going to trace back onto this side. And then this ray is going to do the same. It's going to trace back. Like so. As long as we're at it, let's draw the focal ray. So if a ray was to come from here and go through the top there. When it gets to the uh, mirror, it's going to reflect back along a direction that's parallel. And much like before, we're going to trace the rays back to see what it would look like on this side. And right here is where you're going to get your image. The image you see is going to be different than the first two cases we discussed here. So this object if you look, is first of all virtual because it's on the opposite side of the object. We had to trace these rays back. You can't actually put something here and project it onto it. Uh, your eyes can see these rays diverging and mentally it looks as if they're coming from a point on the other side of the mirror. That kind of image is a virtual image. You can see that it has a magnification that is greater than one. It's bigger and it's positive because it's it's right side up. So let's see if that matches the uh, theoretical equations or the analytical equations. So we're going to use again the uh, short version of the formula which is that the distance to the image is going to be equal to the focal length times the distance to the object over the distance to the object minus the focal length. Put in the numbers that's three times the object distance we used was 1.5 over the distance to the object is 1.5 minus the focal length which is 3 which gives us 4.5 over and this is really important negative 1.5 so that's going to give us an image distance that is going to be negative so we're going to get negative 3 is the image or whoops, that should say di. Negative 3 is going to be the image distance. And that matches our picture because the image is on the opposite side of the mirror from the object. So it's a distance to the object of minus 3 units. As far as the magnification, the magnification is simply negative di over do. Again, signs become really important here. That's negative, and then when you plug in a negative 3 over the object distance, which is 1.5, it 
you're going to get a magnification that is positive 2. And that's exactly what we see. We see an image here that is twice as tall as the object. Uh, and it's going to be right side up, hence the positive. So we've now talked about the three cases for uh, an image that is, or for a uh, concave mirror. You can have an object that is further away than the radius of curvature, or the C, in which case you're going to get an image that is small, upside down, and located between the uh, focal length and the radius of curvature on the same side of the mirror, hence it's a real image, so we've got a real inverted image that's smaller. As you bring that in, you can see it getting bigger and bigger and getting closer and closer and closer to the radius of curvature until finally you get right to the radius of curvature and you get an image that is exactly the same size. It's real, it's on the same side as the object, and it's upside down. If you continue that trend and move it even closer, the image distance continues to move backwards, and what you'll find is that the image you get is still real, still inverted, but it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now people always want to know, well, and naturally, what happens if I put the object right at the focal point? Well, if you put it right at the focal point, these rays are all parallel. What that means is the light rays never intersect on the object side to give a real image, and they never intersect on the virtual side, the opposite side of the mirror, to give an image either. So there really is no image, or you could say they intersect at infinity, I guess. Uh, but it's just that fuzziness. You're not, you're not going to get any sort of image. And if you get just a little closer, you can see you're going to get, at some point, these rays converging at a distance really far away, an image that's really big. And that image gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you come in, still bigger than the object. And it gets closer to the mirror until you're right up against the mirror. What you end up with is an image that is just on the other side of the mirror, right side up and virtual. Which, if you stand with your nose right against the concave mirror, it's essentially a plain mirror. It's like looking at a bathroom mirror. So those are the uh, simulations. The last one we've got to look at is uh, for the convex mirror. And drawing the ray diagrams for this, people often find, oddly enough, vexing. So now let's look at it when you have a convex mirror. Again, with a convex mirror, what you're going to have is you're going to have a focal length that is now negative. So we're going to assume that you have a focal length that is negative 3 units. And we're only going to look at this at one distance. So let's go with uh, a distance of uh, plus 9. So let's get some axes on here. Uh, I will draw a picture of the lens, just or the mirror rather, just because it's different. It's now going to be curved this way. Uh, we're still going to label the focal point. One, two, three. One, two, three. And the radius of curvature. One more, one, two more, three more. One more, two more, three more. We're going to start with an object at a position here of nine. We're going to make it four tall. And we're going to draw the rays. Now this it's a little tougher. Rays still going to come in parallel. But because it's curved out, it's going to be as if it's coming from the focal point on this side, which is going to look sort of like that. It's going to take me a minute to draw this. Then I'll try to trace that ray backwards. You can have a ray that uh, seems to go through the radius of curvature. And a ray that 
does that will just literally reflect back in this same uh, direction. You can have a ray that is on a path to go through the focal point on the other side. But if we trace the rays back, when it gets to the actual mirror, uh, and reflects back this way, and your brain traces the ray back in the other direction, it's going to intersect there. And where those three things intersect, you're going to get an image here that is uh, small, right side up and virtual because it's on the opposite side. And it turns out it doesn't matter whether you're far away or close, this is always going to be a virtual image. So to use the theoretical equations again, uh, the di is still going to be given by f do over do minus f. And here's where the signs really come in, uh, become important. The f there is negative because it's a convex mirror. So that's going to be negative 3 times the distance to the object was 9 over do, which is 9, minus negative 3 is going to give us negative 27 over 12, which is going to be uh, an image distance of negative 2.25. If you look here in our picture, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2.25, I'm pretty proud of that. If we want to get the magnification, it's going to be negative di over do, which is going to be negative, negative 2.25 over the do, which is going to be 9. That gives us a magnification that is plus 0.25. So we should get an image that is one-fourth the height and right side up and virtual. That's exactly what we get here. So to summarize all of this, well, first of all, let me show you the simulation here. You, No matter how far you get or how close you get, you get an object or an image that's going to be smaller than the original and vertical. And again, if you get really close, you smush your face against it, it turns into a plane mirror same size, positive orientation, just virtual. Uh, I have one more thing I'd like to show you, if I haven't wasted enough of your time, is to look at this uh, table here in Excel. I used the, uh, the same equation we've been using before just to articulate. So for a concave mirror, which is the first kind we looked at, you can see 3, 9, 4 and a half, negative a half, exactly the same we, we got. And then again at 4 and a half, 3, and object distance 4 and a half gives us 9, magnification negative 2. These are the values you get in between. Where it gets really interesting is if you put the object right at the focal length, you get Excel getting a division by zero error, which means that the image never gets into focus. And then as you get closer than the focal length, you get a huge magnification, but inverted. And then the closer and closer you get to the mirror, the smaller and, and, and smaller that image gets until it's the right size uh, image, the same as the object. But uh, it's going to be really close to the mirror, just on the other side. So if this goes to 0, this, this goes to 1. And for convex, you can see, no matter how close you get to it, you're still going to get an image that is on the other side or virtual and a magnification that is less than one. Although if you smush right up against the mirror, you will see that you get a magnification that is pretty close to, to plus one. So to summarize in, uh, in a table form here, if you are really, really far away, the image you get is going to be The image you get is going to be positive. Uh, it's going to be between the radius of curvature and the focal length. 
the magnification is going to be smaller and it's going to be upside down. If you're in between the radius of curvature, so if you're in this region here between the radius of curvature and the focal length, what you're going to find is you're going to find that uh, the image will be formed uh, past the C. So it's going to be greater than the distance over here. It's going to be over here somewhere. And it's going to be positive because it's on the same side of the mirror as the object. It's going to be bigger and it's going to be inverted. If, however, you are closer than the focal length, so if you, you get pretty close to this mirror, what you're going to find is that at first um, the image will be Uh, first, the image will be infinitely far away, but it's going to be negative. It's going to be on the opposite side. In other words, it's going to be virtual. So you're going to go from negative infinity to right up to the mirror. The image is going to be uh, smaller. Well, it's going to go from big to, to small. going to go from big to small because initially to be at infinity and then it goes to zero as you're right against the mirror and uh, it's going to be right side up. So this is a summary for con cave mirrors which are also sometimes called converging mirrors. Sometimes you'll see these used where you put uh, a light here and then the rays come out parallel, for example, in the headlights of a car. Uh, a good use for the um, diverging mirrors or convex mirrors would be like in a store where you're trying to see around the corner or on the front of a school bus. So you're basically, uh, the image looks a little funny, but you can see in a lot of different directions. So if you've ever read the side of the mirror on your car and it says objects in mirror may be... Um, closer than they appear. What it really should say is the objects in the mirror are actually bigger than they appear, which makes you think that they're further away than they really are, and you should be careful and maybe look over your shoulder before you change lanes. So I'm not trying to set a world record for length or anything. I, I, I hope that you have uh, found this uh, useful.